We're going to call the meeting to order. Um, all those that can, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Chief, would you kill that furnace? Oh. God. Huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> what? Uh, roll call. Uh, board members are present this evening. But, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Yes, yeah, stereo. Can't hear us, so, Joe. Is that your motion to approve the agenda? Support. Oh. Uh, Raising her hand. Mr. Howe. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Cooper. Oh. Yes. Oh, Mrs. Frederick. House. Yes. Clerk no, Flowers votes yes. yes. Mr. Salvia. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill. Yes. Motion carries. Make sure you use your name so that. Yeah, I thought it was All right, the next item is the consent agenda. Um, can we make a motion to approve? I would move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. How? Oh, okay, move and support it. Vote, please. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, uh, Tammy, you want to go first on announcements? Sure. So we have a couple things going on coming up. First of all, we're going to try to relaunch the community roundtable. Judy came in, we sat down and talked about it today. and. Um, what we want to do is we're going to um, post it as a, a special board meeting so that um, any trustees that want to come, you're welcome to attend. Um, so the date on that is May 4th at 930 AM and we're going to hold it here at the fire station. And, um, you know, this is a group that met a couple of years ago. If you're not familiar, it's a bunch of it's like representatives from different agencies around town and we try to all get our heads together and try to stay in touch with each other and coordinate our activities as much as possible and that kind of thing. And then the other things are related to the cemetery. Um, Diane Needham, one of our township historians has uh, put together a program and we're gonna do a cemetery walk and talk uh, out at West Highland Cemetery. It's very historic, uh, lots of cool things to talk about from the people that are buried there. And she's gathered all that information. And it is Saturday, April 23rd at 2 p.m. I've got flyers for that up here if you're interested. That's a free one. Stop by, check it out, it's pretty cool. And then in May, on May 7th, uh, we are having a gentleman come out who does um, headstone restoration and he's certified and knows all the appropriate materials and techniques for doing this in a way that will preserve the stone without causing any harm. And that is a $10 cost to attend. We're doing it in cooperation with the library and that is May 7th. And um, you have to sign up on the library website if you're interested in that. And I'm excited about both things. Every day was like a six hour yes. deal. That one, the second one. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. So I hope you'll think about participating. That's what, is, what is the date on the second one? Sorry. May 7th. Bring your own toothbrush. Bring your own lunch. Just good. <laughs> okay. Um, next announcements are the offices will be closed on Good Friday, April 15th, uh, 2022. Um, item two, Highland Community Prayer Breakfast will be May 5th uh, at Thrive Church, uh, formerly the uh, Highland Methodist Church. Uh, doors open at 8 a.m. Uh, item three is the Founders Day Parade and festivities are going to be on Saturday, May 21st at 10 a.m. They'll take place down by the, uh, the new Old Town Hall. Veterans Park. Veterans Park, yeah. Okay, uh, at this time, um, any public comment? Eileen? 
Hi, where do I stand? Well, you can stand up here if you'd like. Over that way? Okay. That way you can be on video. Because you've got that mic that looks kind of <laughs> interesting <laughs> there. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. Or 50's doing. Right. <laughs> 50's doing. That's about it. Yes, I just wanted, I know many of you, but I just wanted to touch base with you and introduce myself. Um, I'm Eileen Kowal. I'm currently county commissioner. Um, I served uh, previously in the state legislature as well. And during my six years doing that, I represented Highland Township. So with the maps being redrawn, um, I have probably about a third to a half of Highland Township again. So I'm hoping to work with you in the, in the future. And, um, you know, that's all I have to say, I guess. Just uh, love me some Highland Township people and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. What part of Highland do you cover? The northern. North. Third to a half. Yeah. <laughs> There's three pre the three most northern precincts in yeah. Highland. Will three be precincts in White Lake, three precinct, precincts in uh, Highland. So, yeah. I have the new maps at um, at, yeah. at my counter if you're interested. Okay. What they did is they made all the people that did the mapping uh, drink about 35 cups of coffee and then they just put their <laughs> pen on the paper and went like that. So I don't believe it. You said? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Any other public comment? I have a question. Sure. Bug me for a while here, but uh, when they redid 59. The amount of signs that have been put up are just <laughs> astronomical and living off 59. To me, it's sign pollution. I, I don't, I wanted to ask Lieutenant Schneider, when's the last, was Lieutenant, when's the last time somebody's driven the wrong way down 59? It would happen very often. Because I mean, we got more signs about going the wrong way. And every, anytime you come on 59, it's, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm assuming it must be a state deal that I mean it must be a, a at least state because it's end that road Could because be either that or somebody's brother knows somebody in the sign business I that's what I think <laughs> I mean they sure put a lot of signs out here I just think it's ridiculous and have, you, even, have you ever gone the wrong way nope signs work then yeah well <laughs> started in Heartland when they first did 59 down there I noticed that that was crazy then we got stuck with it down here so I'm assuming it must be part of, I can't the word I'm trying to think of but uh part of like, like not the ordinance but part is, I'm assuming it's part of Part of the, the law when you take the money. <laughs> yeah, that's, I just I just want to go on record. It's been bugging. It's been bugging me for. It's been bugging me for so everywhere you go, just sign it for sign it for sign. It's like it's almost sign pollution. So I mean, I'm assuming it's. It's out of our. I know it's not it's not an island township. It's but pretty just, much relative to lawsuits. That's yeah, I was saying. disappointed when that all went up because if you never noticed all that. Now it's like just they're just everywhere. When you live on 59 daily, you're driving that. It's just amazing, but. Okay, that's all I want to say about that. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. Anybody else? So I just have a question. Is uh, item 8B have a separate um, open to the public comment, or do we have to um, go at this point? You should go at this point if you want to say something. <laughs> okay. Then go there. Pending business proposal zoning amendment for Middle Road. Um, my previous comment alluded to the traffic concerns that I have on Middle Road because our property alone, now this isn't anybody else's property, just ours, have had two super major accidents in the last 10 years. One, took down a 30 foot tree and totally totaled our trailer and our boat. But the one previous to that was even more devastating because it took the life of a young man and broke the back of a 12 year old girl. So the traffic on that road is crazy, right? There, and I'm directly across from the property. So that curve right there on Middle Road is crazy. It's very, very bad. Now, add more traffic to it what, 20 to 50 more cars, you're looking at more trouble. The other thing I wanted to bring up too, it was mentioned to me, it was presented to me that two newer subs in Island with conservation space for protecting wildlife, wetlands and woods in and around the developments, it should be also incorporated as a conversation easement in this place. 
Conservation. Right? I thought I said, okay, it was supposed to be conservation. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. When you use for the 1528 River Road, I just want to reiterate on that same topic about the uh, conservation easement because none of that was talked about. And Kellogg Lake is going to be impacted by the majority of these homes that are going to be built right up against the wetland that is protected. We have a permit that protects that. So people who have homes on that are going to think they have, you know, lakefront when they really don't have lakefront. So that's kind of a you know, kind of conundrum is going to come down the road when we take a look at that, um, you know, as a lake uh, improvement board. But um, mainly the conservation easement thing, if that was to be considered, um, is that something that gets considered here or would that go back to the planning commission? Um, and how would that be addressed? Because I'm really not sure on that. We'll, we'll discuss that in the middle of the, that idea. Would that be so I'm making that suggestion. Could you could, could the board consider we'll that, that think yep. about that? Because we really do have a lot of new homes going in. There's already homes there. We already have the algae problem that we're dealing with. And this is just going to compound that even more. I think I threw out the number of about 26% increase of homes on our lake. So um, and there's nowhere for the water to go. It's just a closed retention pond, basically. So um, could we consider that? I don't Help us move through that and then first. All right, thank you. Uh, any others? All right, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Don Gold's uh, 2810 Alistair. Um, my concern, I mean, traffic's one thing. Uh, the road is what it is, the zigzag is what it is. I've seen cars, trucks, motorcycles, you name it. I've been there 35 years. so. I've seen my fair share of accidents. I was there when the garbage truck went off the road and went down into the lake. Um, so traffic is what it is. The roads are all the same roads I've been driving on 45 years out here. Whether it's Milford, Highland, White Lake, it, it's a two lane road and it's 45 miles an hour. And it's got six times the traffic it had 45 years ago. So. There's, there's nothing good going to come out of that. Um, as far as Kellogg goes and the wetlands over there, um, I don't know what the builder is proposing. The only thing that I saw tentatively was a chicken scratch drawing with a single lane road going back there, obviously staying on the east side of the property because that's the money side of the property uh, because it's the water side. Um, as far as the development goes, um, I don't know what's being proposed, if it's single family cluster condominiums, is that what we're proposing on that property or the builder, or is it going to be single family lots? Because there's a difference between lots and going site condoms, like Mallard Landing is site condoms. I was told that all the roads going to go down and connect to Mallard Landing in the back, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, not without a bridge. The township's not going to build the bridge. And if you think the builder's going to build the bridge, oh, contrary. No way, no how. Not going to happen. I mean, there's a real big fight. I'm tired of seeing builders come in, they take a piece of property, they do site condos, squish everything together and go, oh, well, we have that common area out there, that little wildlife area. They're not going to be able to build on the wetlands. So that's going to be the common area, okay? I wasn't born yesterday. I know how it all works, but that's what I'm concerned about. You know, I, I see the property being looped around the old farmhouse there and coming back out, and those are the things I'm concerned about. Three acre lots, you've got enough property to put 40 units in there. That's pretty big density for that area if you walk the ground. Um, I just don't want to see the lots 
get any smaller if we're talking three acres, because I think three acres is small considering the plot. Um, to a builder, hey, they want an acre and a half. They want half acres if you'll give it to them. Let's, let's be realistic. That's just money. It's money in the bank. It's all it is. Um, I just, I've seen builder after builder come in and say, I've seen them in, in my area. Oh, I'm going to build that house. I'm going to build it for me. Da 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 da. Because that's yeah. what builders do. Don't want to cut you off too much, but we went through your three minute. Oh, I didn't know. know. But, but anyway, actually, yeah, much, I didn't know, you know, they say the house is going to be for them, and then they turn around and throw it on the market. But what? Anybody can do what they want once they have the property. I just don't want to see it get any smaller. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Uh. Hi there. My name is Kimberly Sweet. I'm at 2906 Lynch in Highland. Um, I live directly across from the property. The same question. Um, I live on the part of the lake. When you look across the lake, I see the big hill that they're going to build on. Um, I'm concerned about the environmental issue. What is going to happen to all the animals? and everything that is gonna be there. I'm also concerned about the runoff. What about our watershed going into uh, the watershed, the water table, the water going in, where's all the drainage gonna go? Um, as we've already heard before, the runoff from everybody's um, fertilizers and everything is causing the algae blooms. And once again, are you building single homes on multiple acre lots or are you gonna give us a condo with a whole bunch of people in there, which leads back to the traffic issue. I have been across from all those accidents. I've personally been to the accidents. I called the 911 for the accidents. So it is a real issue about the road going around and it is a real issue about our environment and what you're going to be doing with it and what the look is gonna be, but mainly our waters and our environment. What are the plans? for all the animals and all of the stuff that's going on there. All right. So thank you. I just wanted to reiterate what she had to say. I'm a board member on uh yeah, I'm what was your name? Julie Shepherd, S H E P A R D. And I just want to reiterate I'm worried about the animals and the environment, the drainage uh, coming in from uh, and the traffic. Because we, when we bought those homes, we, you know, it was all private back there. It's rural back there. We kind of like to keep it that way if we could. So that was my concern too. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you. you. Okay. Anybody else? Comments on Zoom. What's that? Do you have any comments on Zoom? Uh, no, not yet. Um, there is one letter. Let me uh, pull this out. The request to his email. That's already in the record. Oh, it's in the record? Good. Yeah. All right, he then. had already sent that in. in the so, yeah. record has been made of it. And uh, so we'll move on from there. Um, okay, I guess we'll. Did you want to speak at all? You do have an opportunity in the middle of our conversation. I'm sorry for my tardiness. Um, I'm one of the property owners in Mantua, so um, just like I enjoy hearing the comments. Really, we want to try to satisfy as many people as we can, and um, you know we do have good intentions. Like anyone said, things change, the economy changes, um, but our intent right now, as I think, been clear. We've talked to many many homeowners and came to an agreement with expectations on their entry. So. Yeah, we're aware of what you know would need to be done in order to do it and do it well. Um, you know, we live in Cobblestone now, which is an absolutely beautiful neighborhood. We love it. We like it a little bit more rural, and that's part of the reason that we purchased it. So, um, more than open to answer questions, even from um, the community. You know, as people have reached out, we've been very open and forthcoming with any information anyone wants. Or from the township, you guys have been great. So, just appreciate the opportunity to come in and uh, you know have the opportunity to do some of this stuff. So, thank you guys for the time. Who's speaking? Jillian Mantua. One of the we myself and Michael are the owners of the land on the middle road. You're speaking on the property. Yes. Let's speak up, Joe. Okay, we that's good enough with that. <laughs> 
All right, so, your property. Okay. Yes. All right, so we'll move on to uh, item number 8A. Um, somebody want to make a motion to uh, approve the ordinance for gas franchise? We move to approve the um, proposed ordinance, board ordinance number 471, grant gas franchise ordinance. Support, no. They moved and supported. Any discussion on that? For anybody that does, thinks we're putting a gas line through your property, that's not what it's about. <laughs> it's uh, uh, we have to renew this with the gas company to allow them to sell gas in the township of the Highlands. So there, it's kind of a weird that we, we would even apparently have anything to do with their lines that are running through right now, but that's what it's for. Okay, vote. All right, Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Ms. Mr. Hamill. Mr. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item is uh, one you've all been speaking on here. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll get, I'll get it moving here with a motion to uh, um, approve the uh, zoning amendment. Z-027 to rezone parcel 11-8400-004, vacant middle road, 122.5 acres from ARR, agricultural and rural residential zoning district to R3, single family residential zoning district. Is there R3? R3. Yes. Meaning uh, three acre. Super support. Okay, move to support. So we'll have discussion. Discussion. Yes. Uh, just uh, since the property owners here, um, there's been a lot of questions about the size of the properties. Are you looking for more on the medium side of homes, individual homes? Um, I guess the fine medium. Oh, um, small. I don't know what's small. Right. You know, on a three medium acre. size of the lot. For a medium size lot. Size of the lot? Size, size of a piece of property. So three, a three acre lot. Three acres. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's our goal right now. So one, one house for three acres. Yes. Yeah. Depending on, you know, the upper, that's the upper end of the type of people that would build. Those are expensive lots at a three acre lot. We're talking about like this lot. So that's something that we're considering. You know, we're not sure how many buyers are technically in that market for that level and size of a three acre lot on a lake. Yes. Only the only business concerned about small density type homes. Yeah. Um, I have a question too. I know everyone is concerned about the definition of a condominium opposed to a home, and I'm not extremely knowledgeable in that area. So, what what would be the difference between you know, building homes, single family homes, or condominium, condominiums? And could there be a mixture of both, or would you stick to one? Uh, all I can answer that for you, Beth. The the correct term is site condominium. So what happens is when you take a parcel of land like that, you can either split the land, which means you can chop it up into parcels and it'll have a specific definition for each parcel. So it'll be a, a, a what do you call it? Cartesian coordinates that ex describes the property. That goes to the state, the state allows for the uh, um, splitting. You can split that parcel once every 10 years. Is that right? Yes. Once every 10 years. It doesn't mean that you can only split it in half. It means you can split it into a specific number of, uh, there's a, so many splits allowed, which um, they originally come to us with the intent to split it at the maximum, which I think was 17, 17. splits. So if you take 80 acres and you divide it by 17, you might get quick math on that. You're using I'm just only using that as a, uh, an example. What was that? Yeah, in terms of a lot. Like 120, so 80 divided by 17. So that average would be four acres, 4.7 acres. So the, the thing is, is that <clears throat> when the Mantuas came in to us to talk about what they would like to do, now the you have to remember, you guys asked a lot of questions about what are they going to do and we're going to see plans. It's not that point yet. 
number one, you got to decide, are you going to split the land or are you going to do it in a different format, which allows for uh, changing, you know, uh, Lynn, you talked about, a couple of you talked about keeping uh, open space. Um, when you split the land into specific parcels, you now make definitions of footprints where the general attitude is you plop your house in the middle of it. So now you don't really have a way to create something that might be a bigger uh, impact in terms of um, um, open space. And, and addressing yours, what you want to be careful of is, is the open space stuck over in a corner over there, yeah. and that's considered open space. Now, the whole thing was is that we kind of talked them into us and said, instead of trying to just split it up and go that route, let's talk about what size lots to get it to because they really wanted to do acre and a half, not because they wanted to do it over the whole thing. It just, but anyways, the point was, let's look at the different avenues before you go that route. But first you have to find out whether <clears throat> they're even allowed to have it different than five acres. So the township board and the planning commission um, based on the, the master plan, which is small to medium lots, which means acre and a half to three acre. Um, the recommendation was to stick with three acres. So the Mantuas were very open, um, said, yeah, let's, we wanna make sure that we can do this thing right. Um, as she said, she, they, they live in cobblestone. They moved out here to, to that subdivision because it's large lots, multi-acre. They're wooded. They're, you know, it's not much wooded over on the, the parcel in question, but, um, and they saw an opportunity to be able to move, build a new place for themselves, and they've got some friends and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it could be, um, if we had said acre and a half, and then approved acre and a half, they could walk away tomorrow and split it up into acre and a half parcels and say sayonara. But uh, they've demonstrated up to this point that uh, that's not their intent at all. So we, you know, we want to try and work with them. But it's the other end, we also want to work with the stay within the master plan. So um, site condo allows for some lots to be smaller and some lots to be larger. So what happens is you then go through a process of uh, designing it and laying it out so that the um, parcels are defined in a different way. So you, it, the whole site becomes a condominium project, but it's not. You don't own the land is what ends up happening. You own the airspace above it. So um, that's, I hope I answered the, your question. I turn that into a dissertation, sorry. But. Uh, so so we that's are, we're a site condo in Timber Ridge. So we are a site condo when we're in the years or I think Cobblestone is also. Yeah. yeah. So when, I, when you were speaking of splitting the land, that's under the Land Division Act. Right. And then there's other options too. Oh, I want to make a point of that. Here's what could have happened is they didn't even have to come to us to split the land. And that was part of the request was why don't we talk about another way of doing this? And then maybe the land will get split in a, a more effective, you know, a better way. And that'll involve the planning commission at that point. So um, anything that moves from here, there'll be more public uh, opportunities to talk about it. They'll be, they'll have to present plans for what they intend to do, how they're going to deal with the land bridge. Um, and I think the thing you have to understand is bridges are expensive but it's up to the owners to determine what's expensive for them and, and whether they can accomplish it they may be in the bridge building business we don't know that um so um they might be in signs yeah the other thing is is there was you had mentioned a, a looping road the if you really look at the property and where the the loop to the west side might come out it's a, that's almost an possibility. I mean, that's, that's the most dangerous spot you could ever get right there, just across from your house. Land is all over the place and it's, so the visibility is bad. But they did go to the county and they, they had the county look at the, the road, the access, potential access, and there's enough clear site, legal clear site, to be able to put it um, to the east side uh, of the farmhouse up above there, you know, the, so there's, 
is before the road really starts to curve down into the, the hall. So um, anyways, that's. Line of sight, you got to admit, Rick, is very limited. I don't care where you want to take that, that entry or exit to whatever you want to build back there. It's very short. Right. Okay. I know people that live on that road. I know I come out of those drives. And I'll tell you what, you're not like you're not looking left and right once or twice. It's two or three times. Because I mean, sometimes there's a couple of those driveways, like 2660 on Middle Road, you got seconds. I, I'm saying like three seconds. Right. Okay. You can see so that I, the car it, anyways, is not there, and then all of a sudden it is. I, I think the thing we also have to understand is that. We all own, a, you know, we're here because we have our own pieces of property and we care about the community and these people purchase that property. And I would prefer to be able to work with them to make it for the best of everybody's, you know, let's compromise on this the best we can and have every have it be a winner for everybody uh, rather than put them in a position where they're going to make it happen one way or another, which means they could go right to the state and divide it up however they want. And uh, so I prefer to be able to work with them than to look at it and go, here we go. You know, so they came to us right away, had some ideas. I think they're very excited about uh, how that piece of property could uh, be developed. I used to illegally ride my motorcycles on there like a whole bunch of other people did years ago. You know, So it's been private property forever. And uh, we've all benefited from the privateness of that property for up until this point and in all time, unless the quote, the government owns the land, it's gonna be available for sale at some point in time. So these people bought it. We wanna be able to work with them and have something very positive come out of it, not a negative uh, thing. So uh, would you like to add anything to? Um, I think I think you summed it up great. And again, like our family is all here locally, so our intent to stay here in the community is high. We have family in Heartland, we have family in Brighton, and we have family in White Lake, including our parents. So we moved here strategically in between them, so we could take care of them. We're both the youngest kids in our family, and just expect that we're going to take care of our parents as they age. So that's you know, there's no intent for us to do anything sneaky. We've been in the community for 12 years. Um, you know, we've got two young children. So again, we, we would like to appease as many people as possible, but within respect to, you know, the requests that are asked of us, um, you know, again, we'd like to work together with as many people as possible to make it a good experience for as many people as possible. I, I get concerned about the larger developments out in Milford and the traffic it brings. And but there's also business it brings as well into the community, you know, and some of those things, but I don't like traffic. I don't like stoplights, you know, Maybe there should be a flashing stoplight or somewhere something on the middle because the traffic does go fast and it's a concern, you know. But I can't control the, the flow of that traffic um, that's coming out that way. But again, we appreciate the opportunity. Everyone's been great to work with at the township, and we very much appreciate it. So. Well, if I feel good about this. More of a tendency to keep it a larger parcel, which does minimize the amount of vehicles coming out. And there's a lot of places in Highland that have suicide areas coming off of uh, Harvey, uh, Harvey Lake Road. For example, because then you're heading this way. So, a, a lot of dangerous spots are hit, hit by someone from the looking. So, so I'm just to fill in on something that kind of came out of Joe's comment there. Site condo doesn't mean they can come in and put um, 100 homes in there. It's based on uh, density, based on the three acres. Correct. So, you can only have one unit per density of three acres. So it still restricts the number of homes in there. And I think in re reality, <clears throat> you're probably gonna be, see maybe, if you're lucky, six, 15, 16 homes in there at best. I won't say lucky at best. And, uh, you know, so there's some components of the property that don't make it, uh, you know, optimal to just plaster it with, uh, with homes because you'll have, You'd have to put roads in, the roads take up space, that cuts down the number of homes. You have to have a place for water to go when, if you put in uh, you know, any paved roads or things like that, now you have to have detention ponds and, and uh, ways to filter water and it can't go into the lake and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of things that happen that still restrict the use of that land. And so um, the key will be now is we'll move forward after we vote 
make sure it's a we approve it. There's any misunderstanding about condos. It's not a condominium building, you know, with right. a lot of density. That's just a, that's the call. The identifying of the property as it's laid out. It's not a condominium. Site condo. Site condo. So, so can I just ask a question? So sure. It does allow for a site condo on a one and a half acre piece. Is that what you're saying, or on a three acre piece? It could um, be. They could have quote a lot. It's it's like a Presswick over here has different size lots. But the density overall for the acreage. Okay, so just so I'm clear, I thought they were doing one house per three acres. Is that so that's a density thing? over a whole yeah, 128 whatever piece of property it's only going to have one house on it's not they're going to have a couple couple of so if they houses do a land division yes it would only have one house on three acre minimum they could be larger okay if they did a land division if they did a land division there's also the site plan review where they could come back to the planning commission and say we want the right amount of houses on this property, but only in this area. And then their lots could be smaller, but their density cannot be more than three acres <coughs> per less than less than. Yeah, it can't be more than or less than the three acre okay. total density. And, and then my second question is have been any consideration for a green belt up against the off wetland and other so conservation easements are based on either the applicant company or property owner, you know, going to a conservation group and they could put an easement on it. If they're doing a land division, we can't request that of them. Okay, but what about the green belt that could be put in by yourself? It could be, that would be their option. Okay, has there been any consideration about a green belt up against the uh, wetland in Kellogg Lake? We haven't discussed it. So Highland, so Town discussed that Highland Township has a 65 foot setback from so edge of water. From building the house. Any the structure. Water. Right, right. So that's our green belt. Correct. But, but a green belt would um, provide a, a, a buffer for the runoff. Basically, if you did a 50 foot green belt against the wetland. But just provide a better buffer. Does the neighborhood to the east, northeast of there have that? What neighborhood? Mallard's Landing. Did they? <laughs> no, I don't think anybody does. It's just because it's the wetland in that whole entire area where right. those homes are going to be, at, it's going to butt up against wetland. I know Donald Lake has it. It's something they chose to do. A green belt is something that has to be maintained by the, the so subdivision. That, the that'll be up so. to the Property owner to discuss that with the plan. So I just wanted to see if that was discussed. It doesn't hurt to ask. Right, that would be something we would be. Don't ask. You don't <laughs> All right. So any oh, yes. yes. No, I'm concerned. I'd like to know where the proposed driveway entrance is because that S curve is more like the racetrack for garage rocket. Um, motorcycles that are going through there and cars that like to think they're on yep. a NASCAR track to constantly cross the yellow lines as they're trying to speed around through those S curves. And where we live on Lynch Road, I can't tell you how many times there's been cars that have come around there at speeds like you cannot imagine. And I can't even imagine a driveway being somewhere in the middle of that S curve where you've got people coming. In and out of the new driveway, we've got people going around that S curve. Where, where is the proposed driveway that you're talking about east of the, of the farmhouse? Let me see if I can get if you have like a screen. The driveway right or the road? The road going the road, out. The road. Well, say driveway. well, I meant a driveway where you're going to be going in and off of the property. You had high speed internet here, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Two miles away. It's probably because we got Zoom going too, so. One more time. Okay, you see where this pathway is. You see, can you see the marker going up and down? Yeah. That would be the beginning of the sight line, and then they would have the space 
all the way over to probably oh. right about here to put that roadway in. And that's something the Oakland County Road Commission permits, correct? Yeah, and they already, and that's that's a pretty significant distance. That's uh, probably three times, well, three times 150. That's five or 600 feet of distance to work with in there. So um, I'm gonna go right through the middle of the S-curve racetrack where everybody loves to- Well, the thing is, is you can, you can actually see in both directions. And all the people that go through there and that's totally um, up to the road commission. <clears throat> they they have site limits and things that they consider for every driveway on a public road. So if we put speed bumps in. Good and bad. Well, anyways, the, the, the key is, is that they are the owner of the property. They do have specific rights to uh, work with their land. And uh, if we try to prevent them, um, then they have rights to uh, remedy. So the best way to remedy is work together and make it work right. And I think we'll, we'll all be okay. So the initial request, Rick, is 80 acres and 17 houses. Well, that's what they could do without even asking us. I'm asking her. Yeah. <laughs> what's 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 the initial? You know, you're going to start here, okay? And how much of that is going to consume the 122 acres? Or you haven't thought that far down the road, or we're not going to show our hand that far. No, I'm I'm totally okay with showing our hand, knowing that there's possibility that anything changes as we dig deeper into. We're not developers. I know someone mentioned that before. So this is not anything we've done before. So we uncover things along the way. Currently, the plans are for 17 homes in there and a large acre parcel that we would build a home on. And the other side of it is that they're waiting for our answer tonight to decide whether, which direction they're going to move, whether they'll do just do a land split or whether they'll work with us. And the, the intent um, has been that they want to work with us to be able to Graph the best was rezoned though it was five acres agricultural, correct? Like the other houses on Middle Road. I mean, you can go down the street and towards Acre Bay. There's five acres, and he's been told he can't split it. That's correct. Okay. He can't split five That's acres any smaller. Okay. I have no problem with you know building new houses. Hey, go go to it, you know. But you know, an average home nowadays. I, I don't see too many average homes less than 3,000 square feet. They're three, four, and bigger. Hey, what up? I'll never own one, and I don't care. All right. Well, we, we got to move on, and I think I'm not trying to shut you off. I just have to get back to the uh, thing at hand here. So um, anybody else on the board have questions? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Um, again, we've had a motion and the support, and uh, it's the zoning to R3 from ARR and uh, take a vote, please. All right, Clerk Flowers votes yes. Sylvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. All right, so that's, we're at three acre and now the next move is to work with the property owners and make the best effect. And I appreciate everybody being able to sit here and hear and, and speak about this because it makes a difference in crafting. Uh, and, and if Jillian is that yeah. doesn't hear these things, she may be excited about some other image in her head and then now they can work with uh, what they've heard and make it work. So you don't have to have a straight road going in. There's things you can do to, to make it uh, work out. And uh, there is only 80 acres of dry land. So a lot of that is uh, land underwater. So, um, all right. Thank you very much. And uh, if you guys want to sit for the rest of the meeting, you're welcome. Not a whole lot left to it, but uh, otherwise, if you'd like, you may uh, sign there. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. <clears throat> all right, we're moving on to new business. Um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution number 22-06, Oakland County West Nile Virus Reimbursement Program. Support those. Removed and supported, vote please. 
Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Howell? Mr. Howell votes yes. Mr. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item, we're on speed with speed motion here. So <laughs> resolution, I'm gonna make a motion to approve resolution number 22-07 to authorize road closure for Founders Day Parade and events. We do this every year. Super support. Super supported. Um, moved and supported, a vote please. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? No, votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item is Freedom Work Opportunities uh, 2022 Lawn Maintenance no, Agreement. No, 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 C. Oh, I sure it good. I'm you. jumping. I'm, I'm speeding. So I'll be there. <laughs> Motion to uh, approve resolution number 2208 to authorize the placement of signage on M59 medium for Founders Day celebration. Mr. House supports. Uh, vote, please. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Uh, Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Now we can move back up. <clears throat> okay, for the past, um, I don't know how many years now, we, uh, some of you were on the board and will remember that uh, we left, went out for bids on lawn maintenance and what we ended up doing was um, working with uh, Freedom Work opportunities for lawn maintenance and uh, they've been stellar um, people to work with is do a great job plus it uh, gives people jobs and trains them uh, that have um, what I would call difficulties so difficult maybe in in normal, what we would call normal uh, avenues. And this gives them an opportunity to be able to learn a, a skill or a trade that they could move into another company and, and do. And it's been really good for them. Um, we, in your packet, you'll see that there's a, a breakdown of the thing. So um, it just barely squeaks by in our, uh, board policy to have to put it out. So it's just a, a hair under a two one hundredths of a percent uh, under our policy to have to go out for uh, bids. Um, if it's 5% or more, then we, we have to let it out for bids. Um, so there's two items here. Um, one is our ball fields, um, the baseball team used to pay for it. They're in a uh, kind of a crimped way right now. Hopefully they'll be able to get, get themselves back to where they can financially do it. But uh, they came to us and said, we need, our, we need some help. So um, we're gonna make this a separate component of it. Uh, so the first part is um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the uh, freedom work opportunities to uh, continue to mow the properties that we've uh, had them all in the past. Support. Support Salvia. Okay, and that's at uh, two thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars per month. Um, so, uh, anybody have any questions or discussion on that? What is the, okay? Twenty. I just twenty-nine twenty-seven per month. What does that cover? There's a whole chart in the back here. So it's the library, the township center, like the yeah. art corner. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hickory Ridge, Duck Lake, Pine Park, both of the parks. Oh, I got you. Other than the soccer fields and the baseball fields. Okay, all right. The soccer fields are currently. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed this part. I just was curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. The soccer fields are currently right. handled by um, Huron Valley. Um, Athletic. Athletic. Um, Will the fire, this fire station get moved? Well, I didn't look at We that. haven't uh, talked about that yet. Okay. So. Um, okay, thank you. All right, so uh, we had a motion of support and uh, vote, please. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Quick Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. 
Okay, so then the next item is I want to make a motion to Lisa, tell me if Lisa, you want to look at that motion? Page 117. If we had to split that second yeah. motion in the memo, the second motion was in yeah. the memo. But yeah, you. That, Can we do it as one? I mean, it's sure. waive the board purchasing policy. Sure. And approve freedom work proposal to mow four ball fields for $690 per month for a total of $5,520. Frederick support. Is that a motion? Yeah. <laughs> Moved and supported. Um, discussion or on that? Okay. Vote, please. All right. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Put flowers votes, yes. Mr. Salvia? Yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes, yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion, please. Cool. Supervisor, can I have a comment, Jess? Yes. Uh, I'm sure that when you first started working with this company or agency, you looked into it, but just uh, a note, might want to check with your MMRMA, Craig Manser, and make sure that we're properly protected for uh, anything that happens on the property. We are. Yeah, we. They're a professional. I mean, they do this professionally. They do it for pay, so it's really the same as having a, any other outside contractor come in to uh, mow the grass. Just that uh, they do it so much cheaper than anybody else can, um, and the benefit that comes out of it, I think, is really a, a plus. Um, any, anything else, Lisa? Okay. You sure? Well, I'm sure that that uh, you guys have used the same contract here right. as approved it in the past. Right. So. Yeah. Yep. But not to say we won't check. <laughs> We've never had next time. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. So um, the next item is. Um, we discussed this, I think it was a closed session last time, wasn't it? Yes. yes sir. Um, there's a parcel of property, a house on the corner, it'd be the northwest corner of McPherson and John Street, which is right behind the Art Council building. Annex 205, West Livingston, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and uh, that parcel of property came up for sale and one of the things that we do not have is parking in uh, our downtown area there, especially for that, um, that facility. So whenever you have events there, art council events, whatever, everybody's gotta go find a place to park someplace else. And uh, so the opportunity is there to be able to purchase that. The house is a, a cobbled up conglomeration of homes or buildings over the years. Um, not that it wouldn't make somebody a nice house, but it's an opportunity that we probably won't have another shot at, if ever. <clears throat> so the board agreed to um, move forward with making a, an offer to the uh, uh, family that's there. And so what we have tonight is the uh, purchase agreement that uh, our attorney has drafted for us to present to the uh, property owners. And in that purchase agreement, one of the things that we did is the current owner is very ill. And uh, so when I negotiated with them, they were planning, they needed to get X amount of money to be able to also buy another place to move her to because they didn't, and she's got a son that takes care of her now. And they were gonna buy a modular home and then move into that and go through all this stuff. and. And so sat down with them, did an analysis and figured that you'd spend a boatload of money trying to get your mom set up in a new place. And the place she enjoys the most is where she's living now. So uh, we made her an offer to be able to stay there and through to her death and uh, kind of like a reverse mortgage or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it gives her an opportunity to stay in the house that uh, she raised her kids in. Uh, it gives her son an opportunity to stay there with her and saves them a lot of money um, from, they don't have the money to go into a home and that type of thing. So um, the uh, purchase agreement reflects that. So um, I guess- landlord, basically? To a degree, yeah. They'll be responsible for 
paying their utilities and, and maintaining the property until she passes. But you're buying it for rent and uh, No rent. No rent. But they took a significant cut in the price in the offer too. So I mean, it's kind of a tough shot at uh, trying to get a piece of property that's pretty uh, sorely needed there. <clears throat> Hate to just do it for parking, but that's kind of what what ends up happening sometimes. Well, that's the idea, but it doesn't right. have to stay that way, right? I mean, right? If something changes, we could sell the property or use it for community use. Yeah, there's lots of opportunities for that. I did run this past our liability company to make sure that they were okay with us doing this. And they said, yeah, it happens quite regularly. They're fine with it. You know, it's, right. it's, we're covered. Good. All right, so somebody else needs to make a motion. Well, um, after discussions with individual board members, there's a couple of changes, I think. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll make the motion and then okay. to, and then we'll go through the okay. discussion process. That's good. I don't know. You might want to make the motion as amended according to the discussion. Yes. It doesn't really matter how you do it. So we, could just, we could just, either way, you want to handle it out. Well, if you're going to do Robert's rules, you got to put it forth first and then you discuss it because then if there's a change or somebody doesn't agree, then you can change it. That's what discussion's for. Yeah. So, so Judy brought up a point that, um, so what's the township? We need to make a motion. Oh, you want to make the motion first? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I'll take the motion. I would move to approve purchase, the purchase agreement for the property at 146 John Street. To um, approve, approve the supervisor to sign. I was ignorant. Okay, I didn't want to. That's the whole part. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's what he wants. <laughs> Give Rick the authority to sign that piece of paper. <laughs> there you go. To execute the purchase agreement. And authorize the supervisor to. Yeah. You can put words in my mouth, Sam. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Are there any on the paper? Okay, who's uh, in support on it? What was the motion? Made the motion. Well, I, Judy, so it's to authorize the supervisor to sign the purchase agreement at 146. Yep. Okay. Support and now. Yeah. Okay, move to support. Now we have the discussion. And what amount? What amount will we purchase? It's $205,000. Say again? $205,000. So she does. Correct. She gets to live it. Yep. Yep. What was the original price? 250. So they conceded forty five thousand for the sake of being able to stay here. Yep. Well, actually, two hundred thousand. Yeah. Five thousand is your share of the realtor commission. Right. That's a total of two hundred and five. Right. So, um, in the document, uh, there's a couple of uh, items that we need to discuss. So that's what we'll do now, and then we can. Uh, so one of the concerns that was brought to my attention is in the section labeled life estate, the um, second from the last sentence that starts the life estate may be terminated by the death of the seller or by the seller's vacation of the property for more than 365 days. The concern was the use of the term may. Um, the reason I use the term may there is um, the second part of it. So obviously the life estate will be terminated on the death of the seller. So no issue changing that may to shall. But the second part of it is the reason I incorporated the may because um, if the seller vacates the property for more, hundred, for more than 365 days, do you want it to be an absolute mandatory termination? And the question there is whether she went into some sort of rehabilitation facility or nursing home and wanted to return back, but hasn't passed. So that's a discussion item. And we could tweak that language to accommodate that if that's what you, if, how you want to proceed. But that was the concern in that the first part of it, um, the request was to change that to shall. And the second part of that can be more of a may. Correct. And the, the may does not transfer to the to the seller. The seller is not doesn't have a right to say may or yeah. We would, it's still would, our our the board's determination. 
I would tweak the language to convey this board's intent as it relates to that section. So it would certainly be the township may choose to terminate. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, that, that was I'm much more comfortable with that. Okay, and then the there is uh, also a blank uh, space in there um, to try and uh, deter the uh, current owner from stripping the place, so to speak, when they leave. Uh, we don't care about uh, beds and that type of thing, but I think that one of the things that we should consider is that we're probably not going to be ready to do a parking lot in there immediately. So the property may be able to be leased out as a uh, home until we get all the ducks in a row to do the parking lot. So do we need to maybe retain some of the... No, we just want to make sure that, uh, that I guess we could write these down and Lisa, you probably... Sure. Um, it says... Appliances, which would be like water heater, um, you know, the oven and refrigerator, um, water pump, uh, that type of thing. I can't, you know, bathtubs and any any hard and fast, um, which would normally be considered leasehold improvements. I don't take cabinets. Um, right, no kitchen cabinets, everything stays in there. Well, the question is, in the event that the property is damaged, destroyed, what if? But if you're, not, if you're not retaining something for well, it's eventually going to hit the ground. So <laughs> I think the, the, the key is is that um, we do. Is there a clause in there that out like in a, a lease where we have the opportunity with permission to enter the property? No, at termination, you just go on the property. You do have the opportunity to go onto the property before closing at the beginning. Yep. And then there's a provision in here that requires she return the property in the same condition. So then we can take photographs and that type of thing, so to speak, of those items. Okay. Yeah. That's bad. So since she's kind of like a renter and we're a landlord, mm -hmm. if things break, you know, if she needed extensive repairs for some reason, would we be responsible for all the repairs as a landlord to the um, dwelling while she was still living there? Yeah. The, the intent is to give a lifelong Highland resident an opportunity to finish her life out where they want to be. And there's an opportunity to do it. Yes, it's a, it's a gift to them, if you want to call it that, but it's also an opportunity that uh, allowed us to be able to have a little more determination of what that property turns into. So uh, that's when you vote, if you vote in favor of it, that's what what happens here. So um, I don't foresee any uh, extensive things happening. I mean, there might be a few hundred dollars here and there. Or cross your fingers, we don't want it to expire tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, that's not the point either. Yes, sir. Do we, do we have our bases covered as far as power of attorney? You know, I mean, what happens if, you know, God forbid something happens to her and then you got the kids involved because I thought I heard the son was going to live with her. He's um, the power attorney. What's that? He's the power, has power of attorney. Who does? The son. The son does yep. right now? Yep. Okay. So yeah, he had to take really care of dealing with him and not her. Uh, no, it's her because she's alive. He, the, his, yeah. the power of attorney only comes into play if she passes. Right, right. Okay. I didn't, I didn't understand that the son already had power of attorney. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That was my question. All right. So, uh, any other questions? Yeah. I have one more. On um, page 124 under taxes on prorated items, um, since we would own the property, the taxes would be exempt, but um, there is a special assessment on that property for garbage pickup. Did we want to add in the last line, seller shall pay the cost of all utilities and service charges, including garbage pickup for the entire property through and including the data transfer? Yes, we can do that. Okay. All right, anything else? That's it. What, what did you decide about the blank line? Are we just putting fixtures and appliances or you want to list things out? I would say fixtures and appliances. 
And then the preceding sentence says they have to remove all of their personal property. Right. Also, I want, we want to make sure that um, it's clear is that if she passes, that the son has a reason. I think there's a, what, two months or something, a reasonable amount of time to be able for him to find a place to live and vacate. Yeah, that's in the uh, bottom of page five, I think, the possession right of occupancy. We say um, buyer may take possession of the property 60 days after the termination of the life estate <clears throat> if the life estate is terminated by death of the seller. If it's due to the vacation of the property, it's immediate. Right. Okay. So we can, at this point, if you'd like, you can amend your motions. You could make a motion to amend the motion. Yeah. And then we have to vote on whether we want to allow the amendment. And then we can vote on the amended motion. How's that? I couldn't make the first motion. <laughs> or here's a challenge for you, Judy. <laughs> or you can all vote against the first motion, and then you can make a new motion to approve. So either way works. So I would, huh? I would move to amend the motion to include the changes to the contract for the purchase agreement for property at 146 John Street, and give. Um, the supervisor with the authority to sign that agreement. So the changes is discussed. Right. So I would support that. I support the first time. Okay. Right. So now we're going to vote on whether to allow the amendment to the motion. Okay. Okay. So that's the first vote. Okay. All right. Are we ready for that vote? Yes. All right. Mrs. Frederick. Yes. Frederick, yes. Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. No, I screwed up. I'm in here too. Her flowers was <laughs> yes. Uh, Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Uh, Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. And Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Just now, listen. what's that? I just listened. And then now we get to vote on the amended motion, which is to allow the supervisor to sign the purchase agreement as amended. Okay. Okay, Lovely. understand. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Kurt Flowers votes yes. Mr. Hamill. Yes. Motion carries. All right. Cool. Okay, the next item is item F. Uh, that's a budget amendment for the purchase of, of the property. I would move to approve the budget amendment for the purchase of 146 John Street as presented. Support. Um, he moved and supported. Um, vote, please. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. For Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, it looks like we're done for the night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> chief. <laughs> we saved this for last. So this is a fire millage renewal. And uh, which one of you gals want to take that one? Yeah, you're talking about okay. Okay. Sorry to call you a girl. No problem. I don't care. Um, <laughs> we've done a lot of soul searching, a lot of research over the past few months. Our department's been subject to a ton of change over the past six years. Uh, <clears throat> started off with recruitment and retention of paid on call firefighters uh, across the country. It's becoming harder and harder to post. Thank you. Good. A little more, a little more. A little more, not a little more. Yeah, now you're in it. Okay. okay. Um, first, the sort of recruitment and retention of uh, firefighters across the country has been an issue. Uh, it's harder and harder to get staff to hire on to a paid on call system. Um, just the amount of training, amount of time required of them um, over the past. That coupled with the collapse of the EMS system 
I send the board emails all the time on different things that we see in the papers. Uh, in August of 2020, we had to take over EMS, EMS transport for the township. Uh, our private ambulance company was servicing us, wasn't able to do it anymore. We were getting longer and longer responses. So we prepared to assume that role. And fortunately, we uh, got approval. In that same week, we got notice from our ambulance company they could no longer provide service. They were accepting a contract for another community, which was going to uh, be more lucrative, but they're having a hard time covering that. Anyways, we assumed a role for ALS transport. <clears throat> and then the pandemic hit. Uh, we've seen a surge of 30% in our run volume. Uh, multiple runs at the same time. We're transporting now, so we've got ambulances out. We've done everything we can to live within our means of a budget that was adopted. 2016? Well, 2016 was the last time we voted on it. We've been operating on a 1.42. Nine five budget for at least two cycles, three cycles, I believe. Yeah. Uh, we're having a hard time. You look around the communities. So they had an article in the paper the other day. Milford's going for an additional millage. Springfield's going for an additional millage. Uh, Heartland just increased their millage. <clears throat> it's getting harder and harder to pull people in here. Um, we work, we've done a lot of looking, a lot of number crunching. Uh, renewal would be 1.4295. That would be difficult for us to operate off of. Um, after uh, discussion, 1.85 is what we'd like to request of the board for approval to go to the people for a vote. Uh, with that approval, we'll start doing town hall meetings inside the station here, explaining why we're doing it. it, it it doesn't have anything to do with the buildings. It has to do with the service we're providing to the community now. It's a whole different world. When I started in the fire service, and we went in there, there were waiting lists to get on the pay that call system, the Romulus. We had four stations. They opened it up to add five people per station. I got hired. When I got into Wayne as a full-time firefighter, there were two or 3,000 people for one, one position. It's a different world nowadays. You can look on, on the internet, pffu.org jobs. There's 35 departments in southeastern Michigan that are hiring firefighters right now. And they're no the list. Yep. Have we lost them, Chief? I'm oh, sorry. Have we lost anyone? Yep. I, I, we've lost several. Uh, Sarah Sheehan went to Dearborn. Uh, she got hired in Dearborn last year. I just received notice that Miles Paisley, one of our newer guys, had a conditional offer for Warren, um, a bunch of my staff is on a list. It's uh, we're building great employees now. We're, I, I brag about these kids every time they come up here for swearing. They, they are just amazing. They're putting their time in there. They love the job, but they don't want to stay paid on call. They want to go to a full-time department. We will be a stepping stone. But we can't. So they're here in Valley Schools, so fire departments, that's the same thing happens here in Valley Schools. Right, they train for two or three years and they go off somewhere else. I get it. It's, uh, we've got a great system. Uh, we've, we've created a great system here. We've got a lot of guys in the community are giving their all. And the, the combination department we have now is really working well. And hopefully, we'll have the neighborhood association coming into the station. Hearing our, our story, hearing our plight, and we'll explain why we're looking for a point four mil increase. Well, no, we can't put it in the training ground for everybody else. We, we won't be a training ground. There's a no, it's a good lot. That's, that's the nature of a pay call system. Is that enough? I'm sorry. Is that enough? I guess I always ask that question. I always come to us with stuff. I guess my question is always I mean, yes, it's an increase, but is that enough? <laughs> so the funny joke is I walk through Township <laughs> Hall every day. Hey, Jenny, can you put an extra zero on the end of my budget? Yeah. Uh, I'm constantly asking that. I'm a taxpayer in this community as well. I, I am doing the best that I can with, with what we have. It, it would always be great to have more, more, but this is, this would make this effective. 
This would keep us operating efficiently. So I guess my next question is effective good enough. I'm just trying to say, I mean, I, I'm a taxpayer too, but I'm very proud of our fire department. And I, you know, you guys do a great job, but I know how it is when we're constantly training people and then they're going somewhere else. I didn't really see her a lot. That's, that's a, that's the first, I, that's a bummer. I mean, we lost, a, we're losing good people because, and I get it because, you know, I, I, I use it here in Valley Schools and I see it all the time in our, in our school district. I just, I mean, I guess my question is effective good enough. Yes. Well, and I want you to think and, about and, it. and you're the one that knows this more than I do. That's why I'm asking. I want, I want you to think about it this way, too. Everybody is experiencing increases. Uh, inflation is going out of control, gas prices, utility prices. Trust me, I don't know if you're still um, Everything's going out of control. We can't make it that we're putting a, a make it uncomfortable for uh, residents. No, this I would be a four year village. It'll give us a, a good yeah. feel for the operation of the bed. And at the end of four years, we'll, we'll reassess, but I'm comfortable with, okay. I just want to, make, I just want to make, I, I, and I understand, I mean, I don't like, trust me, I don't like paying more taxes than I have to, but I, but I know good communities have, we're blessed with the police department that we have here, we're blessed with the fire department that we have. I just want to make sure that I don't want to see that go the other way, because I think that's one of the things we do. Is, have, is it enough to turn tide for people on the to hire a year because we have a really good pitch? Versus every other guy was like some This will add, it's kind of hard. Some of our full timers were hired from other departments that we, some of our current full timers. So, so the first two full time we hired on the department outside the chief fire marshal were uh, uh, our two two of our three shift commanders right now. Uh, everybody else we fired from the department: uh, Captain Bottom, Firefighter Paramedic Becker, Firefighter Paramedic Grabowski, Firefighter Paramedic Smith. They've been from within our system, and that is our goal: is to hire from within our system because we are really great, great quality candidates right now. I have a lot of kids that really want to do this for a living. And they want to stay in Highland. Uh, 1.85 will give us the ability to hire three additional full time. That'll give us uh, five people on shift every day, up to five people on shift every day, three full timers, two paid on call. We're going to maintain the combination department. We've got a lot of guys in this department that have put blood, sweat, and tears into the community for you know, fix the more time this community has <laughs> alive. Um, so we want to we want to keep. Our staff here, we want to keep our our, our pride in the department. But you know, I'm not questioning your facts and your numbers, what you put together. I just want to make I just always want to make sure that you, you, you got what you need. That's that's important. And it's part of this community. Because if you don't, if you go the other way, then it's not gonna be good. And we don't have that. You do the best you can, but if you can't cover what you need to cover, you know, it's just not good for the community. Well, so, I want to emphasize 1.85 is just for operations. Right. <laughs> we have the the point nine two or whatever because of heavily override with the capital improvement budget which pays for our fire stations our, our uh, house payment and right no i just i just want to make sure i, I just keep, i'm saying the same thing over and over i just want to make sure that we have what we need because i think it's important i'm confident i'm confident to be one way okay that's right thank you so right now you're at one point Three, three, four, four, eight, four. Because of the heavy roll down, originally yeah. 1.4. Yeah. Nine, two. But right now, that's what you're collecting. So it's only 50 cents more per thousand dollars. Right. And that will be right. your job to explain that to all of our constituents in the community. And I think that, uh, well, you know, our, the, the, our chief came to the uh, in house officials and uh, <clears throat> we looked at the numbers and looked at the amount of the million. Did you say the increase would be what? 0. 0.5 mils. Okay. 50 is, cents per thousand dollars. Okay. Exactly. 50 cents per thousand dollars. Almost 500 times. Okay. Well, it's our job to help explore. 45 returnables. Four, four, four years. Four years. years. <laughs> now, if you were doing a 10 year, you'd have to be thinking a, a lot further out there. And then you'd have, that's a good time to question whether that's an adequate amount. But I think that, uh, I think looking at the numbers that are actually tied to that, the projections of, to be able to make okay. that happen and then four years from now can readdress it and look at it. So we were proposing in our new business uh, uh, some kind of uh, we need a, a 
So, yeah, before we get to the motion, I do want to mention, so the language that we had proposed in the packet is not, as we found out after we sent out the packet, is not really workable. Um, there's all these rules about how you have to word your ballot proposals, and we, we thought we had it figured out, and then we're going to go, we got to redraw up the language. I didn't get it in time to bring it tonight. So um, we'll bring the language, the revised language to the next board meeting for approval before it goes on the ballot. So we have time. You're yeah. too kind. But it's I, fine. <laughs> but I, I do plan on, on trying to set up town halls before that time period. Right. Here so I, I would recommend a motion to to make sure we're all improvement of, of the amount. of the number, the so, 1.85. And I want to mention also because Chief is too, uh, you know, he's really good. He's really good at budgeting and I've seen his numbers and I I, I think it's completely workable. And also um, it in effect, it's a 0.5 increase from what we are currently paying in the roll down language. Um, the he doesn't mention, but Milford is going for a two mil increase because needing to you know, do advanced life support and so forth. Um, Springfield Township is going for a one mil increase. Um, I don't know. I know that um, Rose Township is gonna have to have a sizable increase, probably higher than one mil. Um, so, I mean, the fact that He's coming to us and only asking for 0.5 is just amazing. Um, you know, we've always operated very frugally compared to other communities, especially when you factor in our tax base is not necessarily what other communities have. So um, he, he pinches the pennies real hard. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor, can I make, yes. I think if you're really having discussion today and you plan to present a final draft ready to go at the next meeting, I think it is important to talk about um, really the alternative, which is renewing at the 1.3484 plus that eight cent increase that you can renew it at. Call that a straight renewal and then do a separate one for 0.42 or whatever the difference is as a brand new one. So that the, the right. voters are looking at two, but one is a straight renewal, and then one is the smaller new. Well, see, that's where the that's where the problem comes. So that's two ballot questions. Yeah. And the, what happens there is the way that it's going to be reading like the one that was in the packet, and the one that's in the packet. If I'm a voter and I'm a voter, and I read stuff that says it's a renewal, but we're going to increase it. That's shenanigans. It's not. That's not reality. Reality is. Put out what you need for a millage. It's the same number either way. It, it but be honest with it and say out. we're asking you to create, come out with, or uh, vote for a new millage at one point eight five mills. And uh, I, I don't know. I, it is a pretty small modest amount. I hear not. If we I've been here a long time too. So um, would we be better off or would it suit you better instead of going for that amount for the four years, go for it for two years and see if we can get another notch in the ladder in two years? Because that's the only way you're going to keep people. You know? the bottom line is you just got to pay for it. That's all you know. You can't compete with the city of war. Yeah. It, it doesn't or matter what you're doing. Or in the South Yeah. Too. I mean, no um, big. Just a we, we can have a special board meeting. Well, no, I just, I, I mean, mean, I don't, just, I, I, I'm just going to be very blunt as a supervisor. I'm not willing to do that. That's why we're sitting here talking about this in the first place. And that's is, the only reason I brought it up right, is this should, so up. that it doesn't come up next month when you have final language. Right. And just to answer your comment, you don't have to do a renewal and increase. You could just do a straight renewal at the 1.3484, just renewal. It won't say increase. And then a separate one for 0.5. That's an option. That's an option. But I also wanted to throw out there that you might want to then talk to Eric about the possibility of throwing language in the, lang in the language he sent today mm -hmm. at the end, maybe, that says 
the previous millage expiring at 1.3484 has lapsed and is not being renewed just because then you can call it out that there was a renewal you could have easily gotten a renewal and you were taking the chance on this higher ballot millage uh, i just i i don't want to do a band-aid a band-aid motion i think that's a band-aid motion i think that um we can get the language together we can call a, a special board meeting, we can approve it then, and then the chief can take off uh, with his campaign. But I, I really don't want, I don't feel comfortable. So, um, I mean, we went through all this stuff and it, 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 we got to get it the way it should be. The two ballots cost people to say, well, I'm good for the renewal, but I'm not good for the increase. And people right. just think that, they don't think about the benefit. They go, oh, I'll support the renewal, but I'm not going to support it. Right. We should put one ballot item on there. And here's the price. And here's what we can get you for. Sell it. And our job is to sell it. Really, 0.5 is, I mean, it's funny. I saw the numbers. Wow, and then I say 0.5. It to me, it's like, it's not that much. I mean, it really isn't. Because 0.5 to me is not like, right. like yeah. even at the 1.4 to 1.85, it seems like, wow, what a drastic <laughs> jump. When you said 0.5. But down. when the average citizen can't do the math, then I'm not saying because out of uh, ignorance, I'm just saying that they don't the average person doesn't understand the math and, and, uh, and the whole tax thing. I mean, uh, you know, millage, they don't get it, you know? So when you're, you ask them to read a ballot question, you want it to be as simple as possible right. because it's clear. Here's the ballot language. I think adding the language on the bottom that this, you know, that would help clarify that, but also could muddy it up. You know, it's the legal ease is what scrambles more people's minds than anything. And that, unfortunately, that's the way it has to be written because nobody seems to be able to write it in common English. So I don't know why that is, but um, so I think we should uh, hold on this for until we get the language from Eric and then we'll call a special board meeting. That would be my. Yeah, you I mean, special board meeting. No, May's fine. We don't need a special board meeting. May's fine. But if the chief wants to run out and go try and sell it before that board meeting, that's not a good thing. Why? Because we haven't voted on it. Well, I would support voting on the amount of the millage that we want to develop language for, because that doesn't, there's no downside to that. We're talking about August. So you can make a decision election. that there's going to be one question and it's going to be at this amount. Yes. Right. The language is the language the attorney provides. Right. That's the simplest way to wait. All right, and I'm getting from that. Yeah. Thank you. All, All right. right, so I'll go ahead and move that um, we. That's right. Let me say this: um, that the board approves the development of of a ballot language for a 1.85 millage that will begin in. 2023 going through 2026. And um, I think that's it. For the fire department. For the fire for millage. Medical and fire services. Mm -hmm. Medical and fire services. Right. What she said. <laughs> Should we add the one ballot question? One ballot one, question. On one ballot question. No, we're not talking about increase. We're just saying here's the millage. Just the total millage is 1.85. Anything you oh. think we should add to that person? I'm sorry. Anything we should add to that motion? No, I think it's fine. Okay. Think it's fine. I so Judy supported. supported. Judy supported. So. Everybody supported. Everybody supported. Should we draw uh, straws? Uh, one more question. Joe has a question. question. All right. I put Joe. She heard me. Joe what? <laughs> I put Joe as a supporter because he's closest. Right. Okay. She heard me. Okay. Um, I do have a question though. So you want this to start in 23? Yes, because, because it expires. December the current one expires now. Twenty twenty-two. Right. Okay. So it has to start January first, twenty twenty-three. July first. July first of twenty twenty-three. Doesn't go on the tax. Oh, this goes on the December the, twenty-three. Oh, it's December. It doesn't go on this December's tax bill. It goes on next December's tax. Bill. Yeah, because that's where you get still. into the weird stuff with ballot language. Yeah. It's whether it or not it's July one. No, no. Because July twenty twenty three. We only collect township on December though. It's definitely December. 
and your mill the, the current millage expires December 2022. So then the new millage would start December 2023 would be the first levy. Because it expires in December 22, you have to have something to levy then. Because you're levying at December 1st for the next year. So yeah, the current millage is going to be what you're going to put on the December See why you, yeah. You say what? I know. So when just, so when does the fire department start collecting the money? That's my I guess I guess we're starts confused. in um, January of twenty four. December goes on the tax bill. December of 23. They're current. So next year, you'll be operating on the same. Same number. Yes. As we are now. Oh, I see. Because this one doesn't expire until next year. The one we're on. Can you survive? I thought it was 20. We're in 20. The last but December 1st of 2022, see? you put this amount on the tax bill. The current, the current, the one, yeah. the current with the reduction on the tax bill to be collected through. 23. 23. And that's why you have to be so careful with the ballot length because you're so, levying for another year. And it's okay. but, so I don't understand. I'm bring out a question here. The, the, chief's, the chief is struggling years now. Years. So that means he's ready to get sick. We got to go another whole year before he sees anyone. Is that correct? Yes. So what's that? That's mean? normal. That's just the normal way it always works. I guess I never, I never paid attention. So what's that? That's do? what we approved in 2016. Uh, there's, there's something wrong. There's something wrong here because what happens is that means there's a, a gap in the funding. No. So if the 2022. So if the millage is approved in August, that millage doesn't get collected until next December and operates for my 2024 budget year. Right. Exactly. You're good with that. It's well, what it is. Can't it is. That, right? <laughs> because we can't supersede that, is you, my question. You can't have, I mean, you're, you're, if you want it, yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> okay. You have one already in place, and it doesn't expire until December 2022, and that's going to be on the tax bill December 2022. You can't have... You can't vote for an increase. Well, why does it vote for July 1st? That's what so I wait, asked. so the discussion that you can't do that was when we were calling it a renewal. Right. If it's a brand new ballot, that would mean two, 1.3484 and the new one, 1.85. But you'd be collecting both of them in the same year. Right, which, which we don't want. Which you don't want to do. Okay. It, I'll tell you why it's a little bit confusing is because most communities out there you're renewing essentially or, or putting into place a year early. And you're doing that. And I understand that because of your election cycle. But but most communities that are renewing right now are renewing millages that expired in December 2021. So and so they're passing it in August and it will be levied December 2022. But if it it's a little different here because you don't have an election cycle on the odd years, so you have historically renewed it early. So here's the other question. If we renewed it as it is for so many years, and then had a second question for the half mill that would have a start date of 22, we could increase the half mill. And it would just have a year longer so that they would expire at the same time. And I think we ran into this with police last time around, right? Yeah, during that uh, discussion we had at home nine or something. Yeah. Like that, we did an increase only. And okay. then what we had to do is we had to look and the years the whole were election cycle. And the township did some wording. The wording was really weird. Went up to one. But, but when we did it, we just did an increase. We didn't do both, I think. Okay. Well, and that's what you're doing. You're not renewing. I, no. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I'm really hesitant to have two villages out there. I think it's uh, <laughs> it's dangerous. I, I think that it's uh, might be perceived ill. Um, to answer your question, what am I going to do for next year? Yeah, you're already a couple now, so. I actually put together, I'm going to cry for my part of ARPA. If I can't get any ARPA funds, I, I do have a fund balance that will help us swim through that I, I might be able to, with the board's approval, of course. 
doing everything I can to make sure that we operate efficient. If you're losing people, you got to stop losing people. So they're using they're losing part timers. We haven't lost full timers. But don't don't diminish the the part timer end of it because we need it. Rick can, can just or attest to this. We're not getting one run at a time. We're getting a run, and five minutes later, you're dropping a second call. Uh, just the other day, we had two medicals being transported, one to Royal Oak Beaumont, one to Henry Ford West Bluefield. Then we got a grass fire down at Hickory Ridge. Oh yeah, here's another medical over on Tipsco Lake. So we had to use uh, North Oakland Fire for mutual aid for it. They are a transporting ALS agency. There are only other resources. Now just the other night we had multiple runs going again, only had three guys on duty. Uh, one of the battalion chiefs was on a ambulance called for North Oakland, North Oakland wasn't available. They had to start going to basic agencies to get assistance for transport. I think somebody did end up showing up on that line and we transported ourselves, but runs are just- They also have a training issue. <laughs> if they go away, hard time run. So what's the best solution here, I guess, is there, is so, this like we I'm, talked about, or what, Lisa, what's our best I, option here? It, I mean, it's not best option, it's a policy question. Legally, you can do it either way. Um, what I'm hearing is you prefer one ballot question at the 1.85 starting in the first levy being December of 2023 and 2022 is status quo. Okay. Now, uh, I think what we can look at some things as far as bridging him to get from this, you know, this year to next year, yeah. we have kind of resisted the idea of one-time funding being used for operations, but if, if the millage is approved and it's a matter of getting through that, that year right. in between, there's our funding that could be requested on, for, from their department. Um, he can use fund balance. Um, he's been really tight on his budget this past year in spite of everything. He only used $800 of his fund balance, which is to me amazing. And I How mean, much is in the fund balance? It's, it's over 200,000, I wanna say. It's, it's a good amount. Operating. It's more than what is necessarily the minimal requirement. Is that something that could be used if needed? Yes, that, if we approve it. If, okay. But it's up to us to decide if we want to allow him to reduce fund balance. Plus, well, so there's there's multiple ways. You, you don't have to just throw a big number out there to fill it up to the end of the year. You, you can do a bunch of amendments as we go along and find the best avenues to get that resource. There could be other resources that come in in the meantime. So you know, just picking one and saying we're going to do that, we don't need to. So. We do have grants out right now. I mean, there's a bunch of different options. We're, we're doing everything we can to be as efficient as possible. Right. All right. So I have one more, one more question. Yes, I don't like questions. Um, I've reserved those for like six years. So I've got a lot of questions. About that. So what do you, what would you, what would you need next year? Like to get to bridge that gap? And what kind of money are we talking about? Just for staffing, I'm looking at about $280,000. Okay. okay. Because there's also, uh, we have two uh, mon cardiac monitors. Cardiac monitors is a big, the high cost. Oh, cardiac monitors are the, uh, the big ticket items, uh, we bought those two years ago for their, our ambulance were supposed to have one ALS rig and then a backup monitor. We have both of those monitors on the ambulance system right now. What are those, what are those from? Uh, for two of them, it's about $96,000. Okay. We're still there. Yes. And he has money for capital for that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> COVID yeah. has killed my, my fire budget because of fire station number two. All right. Well, we'll that's a different issue. Um, so we have, we have, we have options. So we have, Judy, you're saying we have options. It looks like well, what, have you calculated what 0. 0.50 would be the estimated value that he's short, essentially, from what he could be getting? Um, 480000 Ish. Yeah, you have to look at the whole thing. You can't just look at that number. There's more involved in it. So it's a longer. That's a another discussion. Yeah, this is good. Though. I mean, it's just, it is. So we're going to learn. Okay, so we're talking through.
Everybody in favor of doing away with property tax? Raise your hand. <laughs> After 70. We should do away with it and go to a value added tax. So, okay, enough on that. Um, we got a motion, we got a support. Uh, could you please reread the motion? Yeah, it's um, basically to have the direct to develop that uh, ballot language for a one ballot question for 1.85 beginning 2023 through 2026 for medical and fire services. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Are we ready to vote? Yes, please. All right. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief, for all your information. Appreciate you. Okay. On that note, uh, meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Is that your air conditioning? Is the air conditioning on?